Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Happy Saturday morning, everybody. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, you should know I do not put up videos on Sunday. I do try to do them Monday through Saturday, though. So um, do not look for a video on Sunday because, you know, there won't be one. Uh, we have some interesting, uh, you know, things to cover from the past that are coming back up again. So let's just jump in there, shall we? Let's go. Now, going back again to that whole gender equality thing that Harry and Meghan are putting out, they make it sound like that's never been done before. I do believe this is Queen Elizabeth learning how to change a tire, learning how to work on an engine, learning how to drive an ambulance. These were all male things during the war. This was not something that women usually did. She is not the first person to come up with this idea about the whole gender equality thing. Now, People have seen, upon you guys seeing pictures of my property, obviously there's a lot to mow, front and back, and people are like, hey Sue, do you mow that grass? So let me answer that question. No, I don't cut that grass. We have a huge industrial sized lawnmower. But if I let my husband teach me how to use that lawnmower, that's just gonna be one more chore for me. I mean. I have to do the dishes, okay? It may just be turning on the machine, but I still have to press that button. I have to vacuum. It may be just hitting that app, you know, so that the robot goes around and vacuums, but I still have to hit that button. I have to do laundry. It may be that I just have to throw it in there and hit a button. That's a lot of button pushing, people. I mean, besides the front yard, we got the backyard. And I got news for you guys. My husband likes to cut it. Why would I take that away from him? Now on a completely different note, you guys know that we've put out a bunch of bird feeders. They all fly away. Darn it. Oh, every now and then I like to come over and catch them on here. Oh, I need to clean that bird bath. So let's go right into Meghan Markle today, shall we? She's going to be having her 42nd birthday. Uh, the stories are starting to come out. It's going to be toned down. It's going to be a private event. She'll be at home with her family. But does anybody realize why? Now, the articles are putting out, it's, it's so untrue. They are good friends with Gwyneth Paltrow. No, they're not good friends with Gwyneth Paltrow. Paltrow, that's absolutely not true. But they're good friends with Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, whatever. Oh, they're good friends with Cameron Diaz. No, also not true. They're, she, they're perpetuating this lie that they all went to dinner. We've already covered that in previous videos. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow, or I'm sorry, Cameron Diaz was outside the restaurant with her husband. Um, and then she put up a Instagram post later. She may have been in the restaurant, but she was not there with Meghan Markle untrue. They're saying that Oprah and Serena Williams and Mariah Carey and all of these people are going to help her celebrate her birthday. I call bull on these stories. Um, it's, it's just like, you know, when she did the 40 by 40 with Melissa McCarthy, that was all set up by Sunshine Sacks. They're not friends. They don't have friends. People don't want to be around them because they know that if they say anything, it could end up being repeated on TV, in a book, you know, that these two can't keep their peace. They weren't even invited to, you know, the Obama's party, you know? I mean, come on, guys. Puff pieces. Now, Oprah, in the meantime, is in Italy, um, you know, re relaxing. And, of course, rumors are swirling about the birthday party. Now, everybody said that was not a birthday party. This was, you know, a get-together for the launch of some makeup line. I did a whole video on it. Tell me if Megan wanted her there, she wouldn't have brought her there. Come on. She had a 69th birthday party in January. Now, in the meantime, it's been over a thousand days since they decided to step back. That makes me think of that movie, Anne of the Thousand Days, because that's how long she lasted as queen before she lost her head. Um, we know that they've been 
forced to fund their own security. We know that he's been cut off from the family. We know that the Spotify deal has gone sideways and the brand is becoming associated with negativity and just nothing good. And that's why it's going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> All right, moving on. All right, here we go into the crux of today's video. It's about Archie. So we know that Megan decided, or she told people, she did not want Archie going to school in the UK because she said, I'd never be able to do a school pickup. It, it would just be safety concerns. Now keep in mind that Catherine does drop off and pick up every day. Nobody bothers them. The safety and the security that was set up for the future king is okay, but um, apparently that's not good enough for Megan. Truth be known, she has it worse in the United States because there's an agreement in the UK about when the paparazzi or when the reporters are allowed to be there for pictures of the kids for school. So she would have been better off in the United, you know, in the UK than in the United States. Now, this leads into the next part of what today's video is about. Apparently, we all know that Megan had her name and Harry's name actually changed on Archie's birth certificate. When people kind of sat back and said, why? This is where, by the way, all the surrogacy stuff comes into play because in the UK, the child is, even if it's a surrogate, but the child belongs to the surrogate until it's changed in court. Okay, that's the law there. Now, just as an FYI, the son is the one that reported this and they removed the name Rachel Megan and left Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex. It was registered May 17th, 2019, but the change happened June 5th of 2019. Okay, so Megan comes out because I think she was using the they never complain, never explain mantra, thinking the palace wouldn't fight back. And she said that the palace dictated the changes on the birth certificate, that it was not requested by Megan, it was not requested by Harry. And then they've said to see the UK tabloid and their carnival of experts with this into a calculated family snub. And to suggest that Megan would want to be nameless on her child's birth certificate would be laughable if it wasn't so offensive. So she denied it. Her husband denied it. Everybody has denied it. And yet the, the stuff was coming out right and left from their PR people, from Sunshine Sacks, from her representatives in California, that she did not want her name removed from her child's birth certificate and that this was a snub, of course, and that the palace was responsible. So like I said, we all know that Omid Scooby-Doo has been working for them since the beginning. They can deny it till the blue in the face, but I mean, come on guys. Anyway, of course, Omid had to put up a tweet which basically said the exact same thing. And you can see that Omid put at the top that the change of name on public documents was dictated by the palace as confirmed by documents from senior palace officials. Wait a minute. So the queen finally decided time to stop the no explain, no complain rule. And it came out, they let it come out that it was Prince Harry and Meghan's own aides at Kensington Palace who made the change and it had nothing to do with the queen or her staff. They came out and flat out said that it was done to ensure, quote, consistency of the names and titles of the Duchess with other private documents and that Harry and Meghan's U.S. media team made a mistake. Something must have been lost in translation. There you go. So after the palace decided to call, you know, to fight back for once, it came out that, you know, it was Meghan Markle's staff who removed the information. And finally, Meghan and Harry stepped up. So while they're claiming that they were, they were not behind the name change and that they said, you know, it was from the palace and it was not dictated by anybody, they turned around and said that they had no intentions of misleading anybody. No, this was a simple misunderstanding. Come on, guys. Uh, you know, we know how these two operate. This was not a simple misunderstanding. They tried to mislead the public again. 
Let's just take a really quick look at the birth certificates. Here's the one for George. And here I'm going to zoom in for you. And as you can clearly see, her name is on there, Catherine Elizabeth. And then two lines down, Middleton, Her Royal Highness Duchess of Cambridge. Here is Princess Charlotte's birth certificate. Again, let me zoom in. And once again, as you can see, it says Catherine Elizabeth. And then two lines down, Middleton, Princess of the United Kingdom. Yep. And here's Archie's birth certificate before it was altered. Let me zoom in. And as you can see, it's just like Catherine's. Name of mother, Rachel Megan, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex. And then two lines down, it's got her name, Markle. Yep. And here it clearly shows the changes that were made. So she went from Rachel Megan, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex, to simply Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex. Um, and if you heard what I said earlier, they wanted it to be the same across on documents. I think her passport, for somebody who doesn't care about titles, I think her passport says Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex. So she wanted Archie's birth certificate to say Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex. That's what this is all about. Now I want you guys to stick with me because this is where the conspiracy thing comes in, okay? So here's a little refresher just to remind you guys of what happened in the past. Now, these clips you're about to see came from a video that I did over two years ago. All right, watch this. First off, an announcement went out that Megan was in labor at 2 p.m., but this was several hours after the baby was born at 5.26 a.m. Secondly, the announcement for all royal babies born is put on a easel in front of the palace. And as you can see in the photos, Kate's was signed with all three of her children by all the doctors that were present. Archie's announcement is unsigned. Could it be that the doctors who delivered the baby refused to certify who the mother was because the baby was born to somebody else? Thirdly, the wording on the documents is very odd. If you notice where Kate had her baby, it gave the names of the doctors that were present at the birth and it calls George and I'm quoting her child. As you can see from Megan, it simply calls Archie the baby. There's also the fact that what you see on your screen was supposedly posted by Kensington Palace and then removed. It's unknown if it's real or not. Now, of course, we've all seen the ever-changing baby bump, the place where she went in with a bump and she came out without one and the coat flicking, and we've seen all this. So in doing research for this particular video, the one thing that sticks out to me is that when pregnant women walk, their bellies do not wobble all over the place. I myself have had two children. My belly did not move that way. So just to show what I was trying to say when I say wobble, I wanted to show you this short video. And this is a very pregnant person. She is actually pregnant, working out. Please pay attention to the movement of her belly. Right, step, knee. Great job. Keep lifting those knees. Challenge yourself if you can. A little bit. Now here's a video of Megan walking and she's about as pregnant as the woman that was working out. Please pay attention to her stomach and the way it's swaying side to side. So this is where the whole thing comes together. Apparently, according to Lady C, Megan is trying to get Archie enrolled in school and she's having a problem. We all know that Lady C is very well connected. So if she's reporting this, it's 99.9% .9 probably true. But what Megan is apparently telling these very exclusive schools is that Archie's birth certificate is sealed by the palace, which then makes me wonder which birth certificate. She is correct in that birth certificates are public record and are easily available. However, we all know that there are some birth certificates like children that are adopted where they're sealed. You can't get them. So you have to wonder if a birth certificate was made for Archie because another birth certificate that possibly showed the woman who gave birth is the one that's been sealed. 
that really makes you wonder, guys, like what is really going on with the different size moon bumps and the, and the Harry's version of what happened in the spare, which was absolutely untrue. You don't get an epidural and get into water. You guys know what I'm saying. Interesting. All right, you guys. So um, you guys really seem to like Finn, the new people. I'm getting all kinds of emails. So um, I taped a little bit with him this morning. Here you go. Hello, Hoobily. Oh, can I poop the snoot? Boop. Boop, boop. <laughs> Who's the cutest little dog in the whole world? Huh? Say, I am. I am. Thank you for the licks. Okay. <sighs> Let's show people how cute you are. <laughs> okay. All right. I got you. Look at that little face. Look at that chest. Look at those eyes. You are so cute. You are just the cutest little finster. Oh, we were so blessed to find you. Yes, we were. Yes, yes I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> Who is that? Who's that cute little face? Huh? Who is that? So here's the comments that I want to know from you guys. Do you think that Meghan Markle sealed Archie's true birth certificate and the other birth certificate is a fake and that's why she can't get him enrolled in school. Do you think from the stuff that was written there that maybe she never immunized Archie? Maybe she's one of those parents that thinks that all vaccines are bad. So put those comments down. You know I read them. Make them good. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell. If you've already hit the button, double check and make sure it's still subscribed. For those of you who want to get in touch with me, my email address, my physical address is in the description box, along with the links to my Twitter, my Getter, and my Rumble. If you've donated to my coffee fund or through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.